And now it's time for the main event. I would like to welcome my guest for tonight, Mr. Parth Sambiel, or as I like to call him, Sam. Welcome, Sam. Hi, Singh. How does it feel to be the first ever guest of my show? It's an honor, right? <laughs> yeah, kind of an honor. Well, when you are the best friend of the host, I expect this much of perk at least. Oh, okay. <laughs> now, as a marketing person, I can't think of a worse person to have as my first guest because you have zero <laughs> social media presence. So you can't get me any more followers, likes, or anything that really matters. <laughs> but personally, I couldn't think of a better person to be my first ever guest on the show. Uh, because you were the first really... person who really piqued my interest in football some 16 years ago now. Uh, being out on that field as a kid, playing whenever we could in between classes was one of the best experiences of my life, uh, especially playing with you because you were always so passionate about the game. And I'd like to think that some of that rubbed off on me. Um, so where did that love of football come from for you? Uh, well, uh, first of all, to be very honest, football was the cheapest game that we could afford back then. Because let's be honest, all you need is a ground and a ball. That's it. So luckily for us, we had a ground and uh, the football was dirt cheap. I don't even think you need a ground. Like we didn't even have a ground, to be honest. Like if you, do you really think we had a ground? It was just yeah. like a patch of mud. Yeah, yeah, that was. That's what it's for. It was <laughs> exactly. In, yeah, but at least we have a we had a place which was kind of the dimensions of a football ground. So yeah, that's all we needed. And you know, whenever we could get hold of uh, football, we just. Uh, get it from somewhere or sometimes I mean, I mean you remember we have even played football with a cricket ball which is like a small little ball yes so, uh, of course back in grade 9 10 we'd play football almost every day or try to anyway whenever we could um, and then it's you, you know it kind of tailed off in grade 11 12 beyond because we didn't have the facilities anymore um, and I had to satisfy myself by playing FIFA online <laughs> Um, but it got me thinking, when's the last time that you played a game on the field, like at any sort of level? When was the last time you did that? About a year back, I would oh. say I played like a proper football on a proper field. That's, that's, that's very recent, actually, because my last game, as far as I can remember, was back in 2011. That was like a six or seven side game on the street just before I left India. Um, oh. Yeah. Um, so what was it like playing? Like, was it, did the age catch up to you? Yeah. The age really has caught up with me and uh, though I'm not that old, but I guess uh, I'm absolutely not in the shape anymore because I'm not doing any physical activity and most of my time goes with my patients. So yeah, not a much of movement, but yeah, it was nice. I really loved, you know, getting back on the field and, you know, reliving those moments though, <laughs> to be honest, uh, I could not really play. It, though it was just like a 20 minutes half, but still I could not play the entire 80 minutes of the game. Did you score? Did you score on the field? No, I mean, score? no, I'm no. no. <laughs> I did not. I did not score. And <laughs> in fact, okay. in fact, we the one goal that we had also was a self goal by the uh, opposite team. So yeah, we were pretty pathetic. Did you ever consider playing professionally? Back in the school days, yeah, definitely. There was a time in my, I guess, in my 8th grade or ninth grade that I, 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 I would constantly think about, like, I want to be a professional. Because, uh, yeah, growing up in Goa, you know, that there are quite a lot of football clubs and, uh, you know, the, the national football scene was somewhat in Goa. So, yeah, I really did think that I could be a pretty good soccer player back then. But, yeah, <laughs> then... The conventional education system caught up with me, I guess. Oh, I hate to be all think that we were decent football players back then, but uh, yeah, no, we don't, no, the reality is we don't know how good we yeah. were until we would have gotten in. But um, yeah, that's true. I, I don't think we were any good at all, but yeah, the passion was there to make it into a profession back then. Oh, awesome. Uh, maybe you can still be a coach or a manager, you know, because um, as they say, those who don't become players, they become that. <laughs> so. But, or maybe I make enough money to buy a club or something. Definitely, yes. Yeah. Uh, speaking of which, now for the integrity of this show, I'm not going to mention which team I support um, since I want to at least give the impartiality illusion. Um, but uh, I can ask you that question. Which team do you I support? know, I know, I know which team you support. 
Yeah, we can mention. You support Arsenal. the winning. Yeah, is... you support the winning team. Oh, oh yeah, right. No, yeah. Well, even if you didn't mention, I would have to cut it out. But which team do you support? Uh, well, I'm. Uh, to be honest, I don't really follow club football. Uh, but uh, yeah, when it comes to countries, I'm like a diehard Germany fan. Mm. Oh, why Germany? Did you have a crush on a German girl? <laughs> Unfortunately, no. I have never got an opportunity. <laughs> yeah, you're ma- I want to say you're married, so you got to choose the answer carefully. I know we're not going to get the right answer here. Um, but your wife, I understand she supports Spain. Now, did she start supporting them in 2008, like everybody else? She started supporting Spain much before 2008, maybe a couple of years before that. Is, so, that, what she yeah. tell- is that what you know? Or is that what she tells you? <laughs> That's uh, what she tells me. Again, but, uh, she be yeah. No, again, be mindful uh, yeah. to answer properly because you know after this you still have to. Talk to her, so. uh, no, no, no. Like uh, I mean, she she has her uh, you know incidences that proves that she used to support Spain as well. Right? I mean, uh, so you guys started dating you know very recently, obviously. But what happened during the World Cup that happened? I mean, both your teams sucked anyway. Yeah, the last one. Both of your teams sucked anyway, so it didn't really matter in the end. But do you think it would have gotten heated if Spain and Germany met at some point? Uh, Germany would have picked their asses, no doubts about that. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the uh, funny thing that I remember is that, uh, you know, obviously uh, Germany was out of the tournament much before, like not much before, but it was out of the tournament before Spain. Uh, and, you know, she was making fun of the German team, obviously. And I was like kind of down and I was like, okay, fine. And then, you know, Spain was playing uh, Russia and everybody thought that, oh, Spain is just going to, you know, run all over them. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I went for like a special fan screening kind of a place, you know, a restaurant which has this big television and everything. And I thought, okay, obviously, uh, Spain is going to win, but still I placed a bet on Russia because I wanted, this, I wanted Spain to lose. And to my surprise, like by the ending winners, I was so <laughs> surprised to see that you know, Russia really went all over uh, Spain. And that was that was really satisfying, <laughs> to be honest. So, so I've never actually been to one of these fan screening things, um, sadly, or you know, nicely, I don't know. Um, but what was it like? I mean, you were an opposition, obviously, person. You were not supporting the team that I guess they were supporting. But what was it like being in that atmosphere? Uh, um, you know, even though I've been like in Goa, but uh, there were quite a bit of people like they were like ethnic Russians and a Spanish who were there in uh, you know if you remember the place uh, down the road DTR you know they had this uh, big screen put up for the World Cup and so there was like ethnic Russians and ethnic Spanish people and then there were Indians who were on both the sides. It was a nice atmosphere. Uh, I, I really enjoyed the game and obviously <laughs> looking, the, you know, the seeing the look on my wife's face, so it, it was priceless <laughs> looking the, you know, seeing her team lose. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I suspect you might be in trouble after this interview, but the good thing is you're very far no. away from me, so I'll be fine. <laughs> I, 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 I think you're going to edit all of that. So. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I'm keeping all that. I'm, anything that gets you in trouble, I'm keeping all of that. Um, but now, uh, speaking of German football, and I talked earlier in the show about you know a German club manager breaking quarantine rules to buy toothpaste from the supermarket, uh, and now you're mm-hmm. a dentist. So what do you think? Is it would you admire this person for their dedication to dental hygiene, or do you think it's stupid? Well, uh, I I really don't care because uh, the less they take care of their teeth, the more <laughs> I get them to be treated. So. Anyways, the uh, jokes apart, uh, uh, no, that's not cool to break quarantine for toothpaste. Maybe uh, he could have, you know, taken one for the team, like they say. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, that's definitely true. His team actually lost, by the way, so that was that didn't work out so well for him. Anyway, uh, but I know you were not joking, by the way, guys. Uh, dentists definitely do prefer that if you don't take care of your teeth because that's how they make their money. We got that exclusive on our show right here from a dentist, from a bona fide dentist. <laughs> just so you know. <laughs> okay, this is this here. Uh, thank you so much for joining me today, Sam. It was great having you. I hope the listeners enjoyed it too. Uh, please do tell all of your friends and family and everybody else to watch it because I need the followers. You're, you're welcome, bro. And that's it for me for today, guys. Thank you so much for listening. Hope to see you again next week. Bye bye. Hey. 
Hey guys, thank you for listening to that episode on late night football. Now please remember to do all the right things by clicking on the share, like and subscribe buttons and say all the right things by commenting on the show. Positive feedback is welcome and negative feedback will be ignored. Nah, I'm just kidding. You can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Links can be found in the description to the show. Make sure to join me for the next one. Take care.